I'm Robin Crane, and this is the Growing Your Financial Business, The Woman's Way podcast. Listen, I was a financial advisor for over a decade, and I got so sick of the old archaic strategies that your grandpa used to get clients. What the industry teaches today is still so outdated and just doesn't work anymore. So I had to find a better way for myself, and then I got obsessed with sharing these how-tos with other women like me. The stuff I teach doesn't require giving up your life, your sanity, or your family time. I want women like you to have it easier than I had it so you can thrive in the industry. I've now helped thousands of women grow their financial businesses to multiple six figures, some even seven figures per year. So on this podcast, you're going to get an inside look at how they did it so you can do it too. Let's dive into the show. I'm here with Michelle Donovan and Michelle, Michelle R. Donovan, make sure you find the right one. Um, She is a partner as at Productivity Uncorked with actually Patty, who we've had on here as well, Patty Kramer. So she is amazing. She focuses specifically on getting referrals and business development. And what I really want to talk to you about, Michelle, today is about how to get those referrals, a ton of referrals actually from centers of influence from COIs. Um, before I jump into Michelle and her story and how she's going to help you do that, um, she's a bestseller of a book called A Woman's Way, Empowering Female Financial Advisors to Authentically Lead and Flourish in a Man's World. We are so on the same page here because we talk a lot about the woman's way. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, yeah so it's amazing to have mm-hmm. you here. I know we support the same mission. So um, tell me a little bit about you and how you got into this and why you're so passionate about doing this. And then we'll jump into the COI stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, well, I've been, I've been doing the same thing here talking about referrals for probably about 20 years. And uh, I got into it because I wanted to have my own business and I wanted to do something that was very different, very unique. And Mm -hmm. initially I started um, by owning a franchise, a franchise at the time was called referral Institute. And I owned a, a good productive Institute, a referral institute franchise for about 12 years, and then knew it was about time to get out of the, you know, franchise scenario and kind of be on my own. And um, and then Patty and I, you know, Patty and I have known each other for a very, very long time. And when the time was right, um, we decided it was time for us to merge our businesses because we had been, you know, talk about COIs, we had been uh, referring each other back and forth, clients, particularly financial advisors. And we said, why don't we just need to bring this together? Obviously, advisors need the two of us and we can make something very unique out of it. So that was that was how productivity uncorked was born. Was uncorked. Yes, it was. It was uncorked. Yes. (laughs) That's awesome. When was that again? Uh, Let's see. Well, we started we started doing that officially probably around 2012. Okay. If memory serves me right, I'm not, I'm not the numbers person. So that would be, that would be about what I can remember. That's yes. awesome. And mm-hmm. so those of you listening, if you haven't heard the podcast with Patty Kramer, check it out um, on productivity and organization. She's amazing. Um, so it's nice to have the other half of the business here, Michelle. Yes. Um, so, so let's jump into like the, the center of influence thing, because everyone's best, like biggest, most, I guess, wildest dream would be to have some referral source where they just throw you leads all the time. And I'm sure, yes. I'm sure they wouldn't mind giving leads back, but they also, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard for people that reciprocity to be like, I know if they give me all these referrals, I have to make sure I give them as many referrals. And sometimes it's hard if they're not exactly the right referral partner. So like, how do you, how do you, how do you even start that? How do you build that relationship and how do you maintain yeah. that relationship? Give us, give us the goodies. Well, you know, um, we will get into more details in the training, right. And so forth. But, you know, it's, it's interesting because <clears throat> you can imagine doing this for 20 years or so, how many times I've heard the same story about COIs. Um, And I've got, you know, a lot of examples in in different cases, but when it gets right down to it, it, it all starts at the very beginning. It's kind of like um, what I find with advisors many, many, many times is that they're chasing a title. You know, they're chasing a, a initials after somebody's name or, or a title, CPA, or uh, or an estate attorney, or an insurance person, or something like that. And um, they're not taking the step before that um, even more seriously, which I think is critical. And I think it's important to spend time really knowing what you want 
in that individual as well as what you want in the relationship to help define what it is that's going to come out of it first and foremost. And that it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. People don't slow down enough <clears throat> to uh, get a clear image of who they're looking for um, to the core, uh, but then also what do they really want this relationship to look like, to feel like, to be. Um, and when you have that really well defined, it kind of it, it puts you in a much better place to be able to find the right people. And so many advisors are spending time with the wrong people, of which many are the wrong COIs. So who who would make the what who do you think would make the right COI for a financial advisor? And how do I go through that process of really, it sounds like a little bit of manifestation of like really getting clear on who is that person and what is that relationship like, like you said, but how do I know who would be a great partner for me in regards to, so, cause you work with financial advisors, we can be yeah. extremely specific. So the advisors yeah. listening, I'm sure they would think either it's a CPA, it's an attorney, uh, it's, you know, yeah. a realtor, maybe like, is there someone specific? You said, if you were going to focus on getting one COI to be your go-to referral source, who, who is that? Is that different for everyone? Or is there some, someone you would suggest? That's the key. It is different for everybody. And the, um, you know, but, but most people don't necessarily think that because everybody's looking for the same kind of people. And so, you know, um, what you're going to hear me talk about in the, in the training is the difference between average COI and above average COI. And, most advisors are out there working with average COIs. And that's exactly what you just listed, you know, the classic um, inside the box, so to speak, COI, the CPAs, the estate attorneys, insurance, banker, real estate, maybe something like that. But you can get a whole lot more specific. And that's where it becomes um, much more of a unique uh, selection process per individual advisor, depending upon who you want to attract, you know, and if you, um, I'm a big proponent of uh, advisors having a, a real well-defined niche, because I think in so many ways, it makes life easier uh, for the advisor. And when you have, when you have that um, opportunity to develop a niche, you can develop some very creative um, and very specialized COIs that create a whole different, uh, whole different series of results, basically. Can you give us an example, like of a client that you've worked with that here's yeah. the target, there's a niche. I, I, I'm right. a big fan too, by the way. I don't usually call it a niche because I think it freaks people out, but I yeah. call it cloning someone, you know, so we're yeah. looking at who do we want to clone. But let's right. assume they have a niche. So yeah, give me an example of a client here. Like here's their niche and here's their, here's how they did it. And this is center of influence who they wanted and, and how we, yeah. we help them do that. So one um, really fun example is, uh, and so it was a woman, a female advisor who wanted to, um, she was tired of just being ordinary, you know, and she wanted to do something different. And she herself uh, was passionate about horses and she loved spending time with her horses and so forth. And so um, she decided to really develop the focus towards equestrians. And that was a lot of fun for her to develop because, you know, she's, she's got this, you know, real deep connection there. So one of the first things that she did, ironically, was she became an equestrian appraiser she got the certification, became an equestrian appraiser. And in doing so, she was able to then be able to tie in that, you know, the appraised value of the, of the horse into their financial plan and so forth. Um, but if she had not become an appraiser herself, she could have uh, found an equestrian appraiser as a COI. Okay, so that'd be one. But then she started to develop her COIs to include um, the owners of barns where, where people uh, take their horses and so forth. She was able to form a relationship with uh, trainers, horse trainers. Um, also, not only the trainers for the horses, but also the riding instructors. So she started getting much deeper into the connections within the equestrian world than she ever thought. Then she started to 
you know, people always talk about content marketing and putting out your message and so forth. Well, she started to explore the material that she would read as an equestrian and started to realize that there were no articles in there at all that represented the financial component of owning a, owning a horse or horses. So she was able to put her um, content, you know, that she was writing and so forth in, in those types of publications would put her in front of her market on a consistent basis. And in the, in the time that she was, um, developing this and so forth. She actually, I think she got referred to a CPA because she started to make it known. She got referred to a CPA who's, who had um, the majority of his clients at the time were equestrians. So it just blew up from there. It just, and she continues to have um, that focus in that niche to this day. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. It's so funny that you mentioned that example because I was talking to someone um, the other day who just joined one of my programs and she was saying, you know, she rode horses because, you know, everybody has trouble figuring out who should I target? Who's that niche? You know, yeah. where, what, what should I do? And so we start, we started talking about it and she was, she was mentioning that as well. And, you know, we were just brainstorming about going down to like to, to ranch owners and people yeah. starting to have those conversations. But I mean, really the sky's the limit. Like if you have that clarity. So it sounds like step one is well, who do you even want to attract? And this is kind of typical what I teach as well. Yeah, like we got right. to know who's the who. Right. And then it's it, what I typically would say, because usually it's just to go direct to, to get clients, not necessarily look for referrals, but we're look, we need some sort of messaging to compel them to want to either work with you or introduce uh-huh. you. And mm-hmm. so, but it sounds like even you took it to a much deeper level where she just started putting herself in that environment, like, and to a point, like an extreme where she even got, Mm -hmm. you know, her appraisal license. Um, so if, I mean, a lot of people aren't going to go to that extreme to like get the license and have another kind of side side hustle, but, um, but how can, can you give that, I guess, another example maybe, or, or give a similar, so, so basically surround yourself with those people sounds like one of the steps at least. Mm -hmm. And then you need to become the expert in that area. Is that mm-hmm. am I kind of putting them out as steps or, is it, or do you have a better way of framing it? Oh yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. I think that um, when I refer to it as becoming a student of your target, whoever that is, and a part of that uh, becoming a student is learning everything you can about them. Right. And uh, um she, it was interesting because she even started having her COI meetings on horseback. <laughs> she would, she would meet up with her COIs because they had, they had horses and they would go on the trails and they would have their COI conversations and meetings on horseback. So it was, it was when it, when it all came together, it it was a dream for her, you know, yeah. to be able to have everything tied together so nicely. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have, I have another guy right now who. His, uh, he really wanted to focus on uh, Generation X as his target. And he himself is Generation X. Um, But particularly, he's very interested in helping with the college planning. And that has really become his true passion for that, for that market. And so he is, right now, he's developing um, COIs who are people like uh, driving school instructors because they're working with families that have pretty much have like sophomore age high school kids. And that's, that's his target right there is talking to um, the families of with that age and um, the SAT instructors. He's got some relationships going on right now with SAT instructors and see the difference with, with this kind of approach, these people um these quote unquote, these COIs, they don't have financial advisors knocking on their door. There's nobody else there. And so he's not going to have his competition to to contend with, as opposed to, you know, when you're trying to get and form a relationship with a, with a CPA, for example, who may have, you know, half a dozen other financial advisors that he or she knows. Um, And so it just becomes so much easier when you're the only one. It sounds like also it's, you're not going to have that, uh, like what the guilt I think of, of having it be the reciprocity of you refer me Mm -hmm. when I refer you and you, Mm -hmm. you know, cause that's the weird thing. I think when you have, it's almost in too much alignment. Like if I do CPA, I feel like 
they're only going to, you know, and it's not that I don't want to refer people, but if I don't know someone or I can't think of someone and then I feel bad, like the BNI thing is like, you know, I have to refer, like they're forced to refer a certain number of people every single time. So people just start putting like horrible referrals because they're forced to, to refer people. And like, here, you should talk to this guy. I think he lives um, down by the lake near the river, (laughs) down by the river to van by the river. That's what it is. I'm trying to get that (laughs) reference. Um, uh, so people are, are referring just for the sake of referring almost to like meet their quotas. Whereas this, even like a, a counselor or an equestrian or you know, so like mm-hmm. they don't need you to refer back necessarily. Not that you don't want to help them. And I'm sure there's ways you're going to you know, reciprocate and ways to pr- bring value. And we all want to bring value and reciprocate, but it's right. not like a horse trading. If I can, you know, use that example of like mm-hmm. one for me, one for you, one for me, one for you, or I'll give you five. And then I feel like you're, you're a jerk if I don't get those five back. So yeah. I, I like yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the natural, it's kind of like there's a built in reciprocity to a certain degree because they're in the same exact circle all day, every day. I mean, you know, they're, they're surrounded by the same people. And so like, you know, the advisor who's working with it with equestrians, you know, when she's working with an equestrian and they need a trainer, she's got a trainer that she can send them to, you know, or or they um, somebody that just got a horse and and they don't need a place to keep it. She'll have all of the resources that anybody would ever need and vice versa. And so it it really creates some amazing opportunities for collaboration um, you know, and, and for uh, joint promotions and incentives too, even joint, you know, uh, you know, shared incentives. It happens all the time. That's, That's so what awesome. I was just, I was just talking to uh, the client who's doing the Gen X focus this past week. And he was, um, we were brainstorming on what he could approach the, uh, the SAT tutor on and so forth. And, and yeah, and so he's he's looking right now at how they can share an incentive. You know, somebody who works with her might get a discount off of one of his programs and vice versa kind of thing. And so the, the opportunities are endless when you all are focused on the same goal with the same kind of client. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I love that. So um, I have, I know some of you listening to the podcast now are going, what training is she talking about? So we're, we're actually here with some of our, our ladies in our femme mentorship, and we like to do some of these lives sometimes. And, um, and so we're going to do a training after go a little bit more in depth, but if you're, if you're listening right now, uh, like I, I wanted to use this example because I have someone here, Tracy, who's is targeting, um, and I shouldn't say targeting, I don't even like using that word, but basically working with attorneys and so from some female attorneys specifically, so if we can kind of workshop a little bit just for those listening on the podcast, cause they're not going to get the whole training. Um, if you were to, you know, help Tracy and say, okay, well, you're, you're working with female attorneys, you know, and, and what would be, can you walk us through the process a little bit of how we can get really creative because attorneys are a COI in itself, but she's actually wants to work with attorneys. And I'm sure when she works with a lot of attorneys, she'll be referred to other people, but yeah. how do you get referred to more attorneys when, you know, like what's the creative um, angle for that, that you see, cause you got that creative brain. Yeah. So you mean, so the attorneys are potentially her clients. Exactly. Is that right, Tracy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so any, any attorneys in particular or just attorneys in general? Primarily focused on female attorneys, but no specific specialty. No specific specialty. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, so what are you doing right now to find them? I'm um, interviewing them for my book that I'm writing. Oh, okay. Um, uh, motivated by Ms. Robin Crane. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I've interviewed like 100. I've, so I've done kind of what you're talking about being a student in the yeah. market. So I really yeah. do feel like I, I, uh, I kind of know my market pretty well and I can speak to that when I'm talking to other attorneys. Right. Right. And so um, who, you know, one of the things that you can ask uh, some of like maybe some of the ones that you're closer, closer to and so forth is to ask them a couple of things, ask them who else they for all intents and purposes, kind of think of it like who who do they let in their door? Who do they give their time to? And sometimes you'll find um, a theme running through that. Like if if you start to hear uh, hear them saying, you know, well, 
one of the one of the people or one of the resources that they go to is X Y Z. You know, you'll start to hear that. Then you can you can ask them to make an introduction to you to meet that person. So instead of instead of looking, you're not looking for a referral to like the next attorney as a client. You're looking for those people to connect you to people that know a bunch of other attorneys. So say, for example, um, one thing that may be a good resource uh, for you to consider is where attorneys go to get their um, education. You know, where do they go to get their education and who's who's the individual, who are the instructors? The instructors would be in front of attorneys all day long. You know, and getting to getting to meet those people, um, the people who uh, are in charge of their um, certifications and that sort of thing. That would be a, a great place to start. And any one of your clients could probably tell you who those people are and make a connection, for example. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, it is. And um, so I had looked at, I just haven't had time to really focus, but on bar associations, because a lot of them provide continuing education mm -hmm. for their, yeah. their um, it's a little hard to get in the door. So I'm, I'm going to try going through an attorney that can yes. introduce me. Yes. Um, I, so we'll, we'll see. Yeah. You need, you need to get them to walk you in the door and um, without any question, you know, that's uh that's the way to do it. And but I think <clears throat> their resources are are available to you just like that. You know, if you find where where do they hang out, you may even um, you know, you may even find not just associations, but there may be other kinds of of professional networking groups that attract that group of people, you know, that attract, that attract attorneys. And so that's a question to ask them. Where do you network? Where do you go to meet your colleagues and share best practices? That's where you need to be. And they're the ones who can invite you and say, come along with me and I'll, you know, introduce you to my network. Yeah. Awesome. And that's fun. That. That's fun. We, we haven't gotten to do that on the podcast to do a little workshopping. So I think that's fun for the listeners. So um, thank you for that. And what any any other like big pieces of advice that you might want to leave the listeners with uh, at home here in regards to referrals or or, get, or attracting these centers of influence? Well, you know the um, I think the the COI a lot of the issues that I see come up with COI relationships uh, boil down to communication or lack of communication and. Uh, you know, having having the opportunity to really start at the beginning and develop an understanding of what you want that relationship to look like and feel like, and then be able to have that conversation right up front with, let's say you're developing a brand new COI relationship to be able to say to them, um, <clears throat> I take my COI relationships very, you know, very seriously. Um, I've done some work ahead of time on this and I've thought through what I want the relationship to look like. I want to share it with you. So we're on the same page, but it's not a one-sided relationship. So you have to be open to allow that other person to contribute to what they want the relationship to look like. But guaranteed um, nine times out of 10, nobody has this conversation with their COIs. So the COI will be surprised and they'll be impressed and they'll they'll see you as someone who really does take this seriously and you'll be different right out of the gate than anyone else like you that they've met before and that's in a positive way um and so they'll want to be around you and when you get that when you get the relationship in the very beginning on on mutual ground then you have something that you can go back and talk about when or if there are hiccups along the way, if something's not, you know, happening as, as you would like it to be. Awesome. So, love it. Yeah. Communication yeah. is key. Yeah. This is all really good. And I love the perspective of it. And I think it's, it's just a great way to think of it, especially with the niching and being really specific and being creative with who mm -hmm. should be the one referring you, because like you said, I mean, there's every CPA has heard people trying to get them to be there 
their, you know, be, be my COI, you know, and every attorney and every, you know, banker and all this stuff. And it's yes. like, they already have five. So if you're yes. going to, if you're going to make it to number six, like you're lucky if you get one sixth of the referrals, but probably right. you're not because you're the sixth in line. And so right. now you have to win them over and we have strategies to do that. But like, I think I really love the creative approach that it's not those people who you think that everyone thinks is going to be the best referrer. Yeah. It's actually probably these COIs that you don't even wouldn't necessarily label as a COI until you now realize, oh, they are a center of influence in this. And in the COI that we keep saying COI, COI, and it's like, I think even the, what that stands for center of influence is not even how people see it anymore. Right. You know, again, we just think of the typical financial professionals like that line them up mm-hmm. um, versus the, no, who is actually the center yeah, of yeah. influence to this yes. community that you, who mm-hmm. you want to attract? Like, let's think about those words, center of influence. Okay. Like, so who's mm-hmm. actually influencing versus just who's the professional they go to for taxes or, or that's right. Or, for business and stuff. That's what I mean. You know, stop chasing a title, stop chasing, you know, the, the initials and so forth and look at it very differently and you'll find, you know, completely different results, completely different results. Awesome. I love it. Well, tell them where to find you, Michelle. This has been great. Okay. So <clears throat> the website for Productivity Uncorked is just that, www.productivityuncorked, all one word, dot com. Um, my email is Michelle with two L's at productivityuncorked.com. Um, you can message me, you know, send me a message there. You can uh, find me on LinkedIn. If you put the R in the middle, Michelle R. Donovan, um, and so forth. And the reason why I did that was because when I wrote my first book that became a, a Wall Street Journal bestseller, my co-author said to me at the time, he says, put your middle initial in there so you're distinguished from all the other Michelle Donovans that are out there. And uh, he's right. He was right. <laughs> so that's so, why I, I first introduced you. And then I'm like, oh, wait, don't forget the R. Don't forget the R there. So we, we had to correct myself. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michelle. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank on, you. Yeah. Thanks. On growing your finance business. I couldn't even say it. Growing your financial business, the Woman's Way <laughs> podcast. Okay. We did it. We did it all real. Thank you. Are you getting all the quality prospects on your calendar that you'd like? If not, join us in the Appointment Generator Challenge. Go to femalefinancialadvisors.com and register for free. We guarantee you'll get five quality appointments in five days if you follow this system. And you can do it from online. You don't even have to pick up the phone. Whether you're just starting, whether you've been in the industry three to five years, or even 30 years, this challenge will be perfect for you. Check it out, femalefinancialadvisors.com and register for absolutely free. Can't wait to see you there.